Now we can take a look at achievements. There's a couple of things you need to know about achievements in Game Center first and foremost is once an achievement has gone live in a game, it's there forever. You can't delete it. So if you're not sure about whether or not you want that achievement in a game, don't make it live. You have to be 100% sure that you want that achievement to be in your game. The second thing is achievements have points associated with them. Each achievement has a maximum of 100 points and you have a maximum of 1,000 points in total achievements for your game. So you might want to be a little bit stingy with points when you're assigning achievements. If you give them too many points, you can use up all of your achievements maybe before you wanted to. So think about your achievements really carefully before you start setting them up in Game Center. Now let's start modifying our social API script so that we can have it display some achievement information. I'm going to use a little bit of GUI code to demonstrate some of these features. This isn't what I would call production ready GUI code. This is simply some quick GUI stuff that I'm putting in here to demonstrate the features of the social API. So don't take this GUI code away and say, oh, well, that's the way I should do GUI code. It's absolutely not the way you should do GUI code unless you're using the GUI to demonstrate some other feature that you want to demonstrate. So let's start with a flag. We're just going to use a flag to say whether or not we want to show this window in our GUI. And now let's implement this really bad GUI code. All right, it's not necessarily bad. It's just not recommended. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check that flag to see whether or not this window is displayed. If it is, I'm going to stop displaying it. And then I'm going to implement the method. The reason I'm doing this is I only want this to be invoked once when we click the button in our GUI. So we're going to click the button in our GUI and it's going to set this flag to true. And I'm going to invoke this method, which is actually going to have Game Center display this window but I don't want to invoke it multiple times. So that's just a little bit of a guard. This is another invocation of the social API where there's going to be a callback. Remember I talked about blocks and whether or not you should have a block or a method. Well, again, we have a method that's going to be called back. So I'm saying load achievements and I'm giving it this process load achievements method, which is going to be invoked at some time in the future. I don't know when asynchronously and it's going to come back with a list of achievements. So I'm just going to look and see, did I get any achievements? If I didn't get any achievements, I'm just going to say, well, there's no achievements. If I did get achievements, it's just going to log each achievement to the console and we'll be able to look at what the achievements are. Now, what I could do here, since I've loaded the achievements, is I could roll my own GUI code and display my own achievement UI if I wanted to. And I may want to use that. Probably not if I'm using the current GUI that UE has, but if I was using NGUI or some other GUI or the future GUI that Unity has promised they'll implement, that may be great. But instead, I can just call this method show achievement UI, and this will have the Game Center achievement UI displayed. And it's kind of nice since we're using Game Center to be consistent and always use the Game Center UIs. And finally, here's our GUI that I mentioned. It's just going to display a button, and when this button is clicked, it's just going to set this flag. So, in essence, what's going to happen is I'm going to click the button, I'm going to load the achievements as if I was going to produce my own UI, which I'm not going to do. Instead, I'm going to show the Game Center UI. All right, so we can build this now and run it, and let's take a look at what happens. Now let's build it and run it. And again, because we want to look at the console, I'm going to build it using the iPhone simulator just so we have a little more screen real estate below. All right, this is going to take a minute to build and launch. So once again, be patient. All right, I'm just going to rearrange things a little bit. Okay, you see we have this new button here now that says Achievement. And you notice that we have been authenticated as Burning Thumb. We're still logged into Game Center. So let's click this new button, Achievement. All right, now we have a window that slid up. And you can see we had an achievement that loaded. No, we didn't. We have no achievements that loaded. So this particular user hasn't achieved anything yet. And in fact, we can see that in the simulator. Zero out of one achievements, no points. So how are we going to achieve something? In order to achieve something, we need to be able to move our player. Right now, our player can't move in an iOS game. If we start this game, we get connected. And there's no way to move our player. We don't have any way yet to move our player because we developed our game for the desktop platform. 
So next thing we need to do is add a basic control so we can run this player around. Once again, the control that I'm going to implement is a very simple control. It's not a recommended control. It's just going to allow me to move the player around in the simulator so that I can achieve something. So let's do that very quickly. All right, let's open our controller. And let's find the input. Okay, so this is where the controller gets the input. We're just going to add a little piece of code here. And all it's going to do is it's just going to check the mouse position. And if the mouse is in the top right hand corner of the screen at the top, it's going to move forward. Otherwise, on the sides, it'll turn right. Otherwise, on the bottom, it'll move down. Once again, it's not a recommended controller. If I was doing this for deployment, I would have a nice little joystick that I could use to run my player around. But this will be good enough so that we can move the player around in the simulator and achieve something. Now, in order to achieve something, we need a script somewhere, a behavior that allows us to achieve something. So let's take a look at our drop zone. And we have this trigger. First of all, I'm just going to put a guard here so that if it's not the main character, nothing happens. But then if it is the main character, we will use the social API. Notice here again, I'm checking to make sure the user is still authenticated. The user could have logged out of Game Center at some point in time. So I always have to check to make sure that the user is authenticated. If the user is not authenticated, this will cause the Game Center screen to show up and it'll either come back with true or false, depending whether or not the user logged in. We're just going to report that this particular, and I'll show you this in iTunes Connect, this is the identifier of the achievement. This particular achievement was 100% achieved. And of course, we have a handle progress that we need to implement. And all we're going to do very quickly in handle progress is report whether or not this progress was successful or not. So I'm just reporting progress that this particular thing was fully achieved. You don't have to do it this way. Achievements can be achieved over a period of time. So an achievement, if it's worth 100 points, that could be 100%. And as the user completes that percent of the achievement, you could get the value that's currently there, add one to it, and put it back. But just to quickly demonstrate how an achievement is reported, I'm just going to say it's completely done. The guy went out, he got some coconuts, he threw them in the hut, he successfully achieved this. Probably this achievement should have a point value of 1 instead of 100, but you get the idea. Once again, we need to rebuild and run the game, and we're going to do it in the simulator again. This is going to take a bit of time. I'm going to pause here, and I'm going to come back when the game is up and running. This is successfully built, and it's just launched in the simulator. Sorry for the jump, but it's more interesting than waiting for that. So I'm going to start the game. And now I should be able to move my player around. As you see, I have my little control here up in the right-hand corner of the screen. And I didn't implement run. But that's all right. There's a coconut. Let's just grab that one. Oh, there's another one. We'll grab, grab that one. All right, now let's go back to our hut and achieve something. All right, we've dropped our nuts in the hut. And if you see down here, actually, let's just open the achievements. Okay, there you go. So as you can see, we have one of one achievement, 10 points. We're a gatherer. And we can look there and we can see our achievement and when we achieved it and how many points we got for it. So that's what you need to do. Now, we can look in iTunes Connect and see exactly how this achievement was set up. And we'll do that next. All right, let's go to iTunes Connect. Manage our apps. Coconut Hut. Manage Game Center. Game Center is enabled. I should have showed you that a little bit earlier. All right, here's our achievements. And here's our gatherer achievement. It has its name. It has this achievement ID. Remember that value one, quote unquote one. That's the achievement ID here. It can be any alphanumeric string. Here's its point value. 
and here's the image that was displayed. So that's how you set up an achievement in iTunes Connect. If we were to add another achievement, simply click Add Achievement, give it a name, an ID, a point value. You notice it's telling us how many points we have left. It's keeping track of our points that we're using, whether or not it's hidden, whether or not it's achievable more than once. And then you have to add a language. You need at least one language, the title, the pre-earned description, what it says before that achievement is earned, and the earned description, what it says after that achievement is earned, and an optional image file. You don't have to have an image, but you can put an image file in there if you want. Now, I'm not actually going to add a second achievement. The one achievement is all that we need to demonstrate how achievements work. Okay, and that's it for this section.